Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning, good afternoon or good evening or at any time that you're watching this. Welcome to your organizational behavior online classes. This is a pre-recorded video uh, because I believe this is the best way and uh, the best medium to reach all students because I've tried Google Meetup before this but it just didn't work. Some students couldn't join because they have an uh, awful internet connection just like me. So I think by having pre-recorded videos, it will be easier for students to download and you can um, refer to the video again and again if you're not clear about it. And uh, for your information, we just going we are only going to cover a few part of the slides because I believe the rest of the slides is easy for you guys to be under to be understood by you guys. And as always, as always, if you have any confusions in understanding any of the parts, any parts of our discussion of the lecture, or any parts that we have not touched on, can you just contact me and I will give you a call or give you an email or whatever it is the best way in terms of making you understand of that particular uh, question of yours. Yeah. So moving on. Uh, we're gonna take a look at what uh, the what this topic is all about yeah so we're going to learn about workplace attitude so in previous chapter we have discussed about attitude uh, in a minute detail I mean to say that we barely just go deep about it so in previous chapter we talk about perception we talk about how culture affects the way we view the world yeah, in some ways it affects our attitude as well so let's take a look at what is attitude yeah? so attitude here can be defined as a cluster of beliefs assess feelings and behavioral intention towards a person object or event so it is a cluster I mean to say it is a group or combination of other things that form one identity which is this attitude attitude in Malay is called Sikap, yeah, I believe we have discussed about this. So when you talk about attitude, it doesn't mean a specific thing, but rather a combination of other dimension or other things that makes us humans. I just our belief. Belief has many spectrum. Yeah, you can believe in terms of your yeah, belief can be represented from your either your religion, your faith, or the way you see how the world operates. I mean, like if you believe that by doing good you're gonna get good so that is your belief or if you believe that this world if you do bad and nothing's gonna happen that is the kind of belief that you have so each and everyone in this world are independent in creating their own belief system or something that they believe inside so that is one part of attitude next is assess feelings assess feelings mean to say a feeling that comes after thinking yeah I mean to say that you, you just couldn't hate something for no particular reason there must be a reason why you hate that thing for instance have you ever asked yourself why you hate that person there must be a reason right and that is what we call assess feeling and do not only focus on the negative things as well it could also go towards things that you like why do you like him or why do you like her those are assess feelings because there are certain reasons that you like them assess feeling your belief next assess feelings and third one behavioral intention this behavioral intention is what do you want to do about it will you do something about it or will you ignore it or will you have your own way of action in how to handle it yeah so all of this combination all of this is just a this combination of cluster of beliefs assess feelings and behavior intention towards a person object or event yeah so you have different attitude towards different things sometimes uh it can be consistent sometimes I, but i believe human beings i believe myself too we are inconsistent in our attitude we cannot apply everything towards the same attitude especially for something that perhaps you don't like so that is the meaning of attitude and this attitude is very important in the workplace if you want to understand your employees as well as your employer 
yeah so let's take a look at the next slide here so components of attitude is comprised of this particular three issues yeah cognitive thinking affective feeling and behavioral of components which is the behaving part here so i want you guys to rem uh, remind and burn it into your brain that cognitive refers towards your thinking capabilities whatever the word cognitive comes about it refers towards your brain whatever that is going on inside of your brain and affective here refers towards your emotion yeah something that goes inside so if a question comes out uh, in the future or in the final examination or somebody is discussing about cognitive or affective you know that it, they are talking about your mind and they're talking about your emotion and the last one here the last component is behavior behavior okay so let's take a look at how does this component of attitude works in real life in this particular slide you will see a first okay a first part of the attitude the components of the attitude which is the stimuli or work environment factors so this stimuli refers towards your environment what is happening around you especially in the workplace yeah for instance let's take a look at example here manager styles technology noise peers reward system compensation plan or career opportunities those are your environment and this environment will affect the way you think your cognition your beliefs and values and your cognition will then affect your emotion and once the emotion is affected then it will eventually become your behavior so that is what we say the connection of attitude you have in order to understand how your environment affects your thinking then affects your emotion and affect your behavior let's take a look at an example here that's been given here manager styles uh, then you believe that your supervisor is unfair okay the thinking part you think that your supervisor is unfair and that makes your emotion that you don't like your supervisor and then eventually your behavior is that you want to quit or in another case you you think that your supervisor is fair so when your supervisor is fair then you will like your supervisor and your behavior perhaps better working performances yeah so all of these are components of attitude and this can be applied to any part of works in a company any part of a work in a company yeah so you can read on your own example here i believe this is very clear towards you as students yeah and I want you guys to take a look at the example and try to understand it and create your own examples by the end of the class uh, to ensure that you understand what is in attitude yeah so let's move on towards this one cognitive dissonance so let's take a look at this definition a psychological tension that occurs when people perceive an inconsistency between their belief feelings and behavior so dissonance refer towards something uh, that doesn't go well with that particular environment that does not create harmony yeah it makes chaos because you already have pre-established rules and that rule sometimes may be broken so this is creating cognitive dissonance so remember when you talk about cognitive it always refers towards your brain something that going that is going on inside of your head so it is psychological so this co uh, cognitive dissonance is basically the inconsistency between the belief feelings and behavior whereby emotions and attitude usually lead to behavior but the opposite sometimes occur so what does it mean here okay for instance you take a look at example here yeah you volunteered to take a foreign assignment you weren't particularly interested in the posting but thought that it might be necessary for promotion into senior management however later you learn that most people become senior management sorry senior managers in the firm without spending any time in foreign assessment so let's take a look at what it says here the inconsistency here is that a person's belief feelings and behavior situation creates an uncomfortable tension called cognitive dissonance because you believe something could happen that's why you do it but then you realize you, your belief is not true yeah so it's create a dissonance
for instance you uh, other exa I think other easy, easy example it can come in terms of uh, you believe that hard work will eventually get you promoted yeah that is your cognitive understanding right but you have your friends who didn't have any hard working for the last few years but he or she got promoted because he or she has personal connection and that breaks your cognitive that makes a cognitive dissonance it makes your beliefs to be inconsistent with what is happening in your life in terms of feelings and behavior yeah so this is something that doesn't go doesn't go well doesn't because you believe something but eventually in real life it, it, it doesn't correspond towards what you believe in yeah and you can produce any other examples on your own for instances yeah like for students you believe that when you're study when you're studying hard when you're studying at 2 a.m in the morning you expect yourself going to be performing uh with flying colors by the end of the test but when you don't do it when you didn't get the final result that that you expected by studying all night it creates this cognitive dissonance yeah so it can be applied towards any person when you have a strong belief towards a particular person or event or anything in particular yeah if let's take a look at the previous slide if your sorry if your belief is inconsistent yeah if you're with your feelings or your uh, beliefs then you have to change your behavior in order to match with your what what whatever part that is inconsistent whatever part that is creating the dissonance so you need to change your behavior in accordance towards this new belief that you have to accept yeah that uh, this new feeling that you have to accept therefore your behavior will be coherent you to say that it is linear it is the same so uh, second one is in terms of changing beliefs and feelings so it is in order for you to create that kind of changes inside of you your heart and your mind in order for this you need to change the uh, the way you take a look at the world the way you take a look at that particular job or that particular work therefore you could understand how it can affect you yeah let's take a look at the example uh, example here you might convince yourself that foreign forcing is not too bad after all because you will develop your management skills your negative attitude towards foreign assignment has changed to a more favorable one so this reflects towards the previous example that was discussed before this yeah so i believe i i think you can understand on this side yeah so in order to reduce this cognitive dissonance you have to change your behavior and you have to change your beliefs and your feelings in order to match with the new situation that you are in yeah first, uh, first one we have cognition yeah it was talking about the mind second one which is about emotional dissonance a conflict between a person's required and true emotion required and true emotion those are the two words that i want you guys to focus in what is required and what is true emotion for instance you want to be happy you require to be happy but when you're doing that job you're not happy and that is what we call as true feelings yeah or in other way in another way you expect by doing something you might be not happy doing it okay you you think you're not happy but in the end apparently you're happy doing it so it is emotional dissonance yeah emotion this dissonance so required and true emotion what you expect to have and to get and what was the real feeling that eventually that you obtain afterwards yeah so it can be minimized to deep acting rather than surface i think so this this is a two ways involve the per that has deep acting it involves changing through emotions to match required emotion uh, emotion train yourself to actually feel the emotion you're supposed to express that's deep acting let's take a look at surface acting involve pretending modify to show the required emotion but continuing to hold different internal feelings example we force a smile while greeting customer whom we consider rude so this is surface and this is deep so when you talk about deep it goes towards your mind and your heart your feeling so involve changing through emotion just like how we change our inconsistencies 
in uh, cognitive dissonance yeah involve changing through emotion to match required emotions train yourself to actually feel the emotion you're supposed to express yeah and surface thing is basically you just see the facade the external side yeah for instance okay example has been given here we force a smile while greeting a customer whom we consider to be rude so surface acting you just smile but deep acting you genuinely feel happy to help them out even though they were rude and you can see example like this like for like nurses or you can see examples such as a uh, hotel frontliners yeah they they also always face people who are really rude towards them so eventually they would either uh, either want to rebut them mean to go uh, go ballistic on them or other they can show their deep acting or surface acting in order to create that kind of uh, imbalance in their emotion and the last part of this lecture we're going to talk about job satisfaction so this i think is is quite pretty simple yeah so satisfaction is really clear so there are few components that makes you satisfied in your work for instance job content supervisor co-workers working condition pay and benefits and career progress so i want you guys to study on your own on all of these particular uh, points and give explanation why they are important in making a good job satisfaction of making uh, sorry making workers satisfied in their work so i guess it, it is all oh uh, wait 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 yeah we haven't discussed on one last important one this which is the evln model responses to this dissatisfaction so when you are dissatisfied yeah there are four ways it's going to come out either you got to exit you're gonna voice either you uh continue with the loyalty i didn't go on with neglect so let's take a look at the first one exit here leaving the situation due to unfair conflict matching decision quitting or transferring so you just for instance you are dissatisfied in terms of the way the company is handling you so you don't like it so you just exit the place you quit yeah that's the first one so this is the first response this is the first evelyn model second is voice it out a voice yeah attempt to change the situation recommending ways to solve the problem complaining feeling formal grievances so you ne negotiate with the people in your organization that you're dissatisfied with in any concern that you have so you voice them out third one is loyalty patiently waiting for the situation to improve suffer in silence for the problem to work itself or solved by others you, you don't really bother you you don't want to exit the organization you don't want you don't want to voice it out you just stay there yeah because you are loyal towards that company you believe that other people is going to solve it or the management is going to solve it so these are the uh, this is one of the responses towards the satisfaction you have the exit you have the voice you have the loyalty you stay within it in your organization yeah and the last one is neglect reducing work effort paying less attention to quality increasing absenteeism or lateness means that you don't really care about your work anymore if they're not really gonna if they're not really gonna care for you then why should you care with doing proper work you become demotivated and if the company is not going to care for you and you're not going to care for them yeah so you do not the best but just uh, as long as you're in the company you don't really care why you're there so these are the evelyn model responses to dissatisfaction yeah so i guess that is all for uh, our for this particular chapter so you have i believe you guys have the books with you and i believe that you will try to understand it on your own first yeah i believe but in case there are any confusion you may contact me uh at any particular time before i go to sleep yeah so thank you so much guys i see you when i see you stay safe